in case you missed it. Okay, so the sermon for today, the title is Chicken Poetry. <laughs> um, uh, forgive me, those of you who actually follow me on Facebook, because you probably saw this joke already because I shared it. But sometimes you tell a joke and then it like haunts with you for a while, like gets under your skin. Um, so uh, I don't know if you saw this, Gloria, but I saw this uh, meme and it was called Chicken Poetry and it had a chicken that had clearly like written out a poem and was like reading it like like a beatnik reading beatnik chicken reading poetry and mm -hmm. uh this was the chicken's poem it said chickens roads the real crossing is within there is no other side <laughs> Which, of course, is like silly, but I got stuck on the last part. I kept thinking about the like, there is no other side. Because it sure feels like there's sides recently, you know, all over the place. Um, and I think that that messes with people like me, especially because like I, in my core, like I try to be like a helper. Like I want people to get along like, and I think that's good. I think it's part of what God called me to, but I like also like sometimes it sets you up. I remember when I was in um, high school, I was uh, <clears throat> seeing this therapist. And he was a kind of an interesting therapist to see as a high schooler. I think he was actually like, what he was doing was more like pastoring <laughs> than therapy, but it worked for me. Um, go figure. Anyway, um, so as I was meeting with him one day, he just turned to me and he was, and he said this thing uh, that stopped like me cold. I still think about it. He, he was like, when I was sort of talking about trying to make people feel better or help people get along or like get over the like side, between, he um, turned to me and he said, Les, you can't make anyone feel anything. He said, um, everything that they say and they do is a gift to you to tell them who they are. And everything you do and you say is a gift to them to tell you who you are. He was talking about the way we act reveals our heart. And that's fun. So, to me, that's so captivating, like then, but even especially maybe even now, like even more so. Because how often are we like, those people, they make me so angry. Do they? Like, is the stuff outside, does it make you, like, can it make you feel? It certainly feels like that, right? We tell ourselves that. We tell each other that. Um, but I always get stuck on the wisdom of that therapist. And maybe because I know that it bumps up against something that Jesus said. You know, it's funny when the therapist said that, it felt like heresy to me. Like all the great truths, I think, feel that way. Like the things that all the great truths first sound like heresy, and then they stick with you. Um, Jesus says something in the reading today that absolutely sounds like heresy to his people. Like he turns the table on the, in, on the way they look at righteousness 180 degrees he says it's not what comes into the body that defiles it's what comes out of the body that defiles and this is a big thing um both in his context but also in ours so in his context it's important because like remember they're jews like there's all this stuff about what you eat and what you don't eat and if you eat the wrong like if you eat pork or shellfish like it's uh, it can be seen as an abomination to god like um the things you put in the body quite literally um, are signs of righteousness to everyone he's talking about, he's talking to. No wonder it says that the Pharisees were offended. Like he shook the whole thing. Um, and yet Jesus is just like, yeah, okay, eat pork, you'll poop it out. But it's different, like if it comes, what comes out of you, what comes out of the heart. Um, nothing that happens to you tells you who you are. It's what comes out of you that that tell that defiles you or makes you righteous or 
uh, or show or shows or bears your love. Like that is like a really remarkable thing. Like I said, it's radical in his context, but it's still radical even in ours. Because once again, how often do we say, you made me so angry, argue, like it's like becomes um, uh, uh, a this like instinct to go back and forth. How often do we blame other people in our own minds and in our own souls for our responses, even though our responses are just our own? It's not what comes into the body that defiles, it's what comes out of the body that defiles. And that sounded like heresy. Just like all really true things sound like heresy in the first place. And it's interesting, you know, like, so Jesus does this whole thing about um, how uh, we can respond, I would say, in love versus in all of the things that lead to destructive um, uh, responses. And certainly when we look at Jesus's life as a whole, we see that, right? Like, who could stand, who could be nailed to the cross and say, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. I mean, that is like an ultimate example of what it means that no matter what people throw at you, you bring back the best of who you are. He is not defiled by their actions on the cross, even though they are designed to make him feel shame. But interestingly enough, in this reading, like, okay, so we have this whole paragraph about that. And then there's this story, which is a really annoying story um, uh, about uh, this woman who comes for healing. Uh, and Jesus is just like, seems really jerky to her. Like he literally calls her a dog. It seems like he is absolutely not practicing what he literally just preached. Um, I have like a long explanation for that, which is probably not useful this morning. Like I actually think I know what Jesus is doing. Um, but for this morning, I think that that's less important as it is that this Canaanite woman becomes the ultimate example for what Jesus is talking about. It, she almost becomes like a living parable in response to Jesus's teaching because she um, comes, she's, try, she's desperate to try to feel, find healing for her daughter. Um, and uh, Jesus ignores her the disciples try to throw her away, try to send her away. The disciples tell Jesus to send her away. Jesus ultimately calls her a dog and she says, yes, Lord. And even the dogs um, get the crumbs from the master's table. Like she stays in persistence and tenacity because she's trying to get healing for her daughter. Instead of fighting with Jesus, she chooses to work with him despite the fact that it seems like everybody's setting sides against them, like setting up sides to have them be against each other. Instead of fighting against him, she decides to work with him. How much different would the world be if each of us like chose that path rather than fighting against people to work with them? It's so wild in my mind to try to even think about it. And I think that part of the reason is the reason why we do those things, the reason why we respond in ways that defile our heart is because we feel powerless, you know, and we try to take the power back. But the ironic truth is the real power isn't what we think of as power. This is what Jesus is showing us. The real power is the love that God has given us in our heart. The ability to show love regardless of what the world throws at you. That is real power. You know, sometimes um, it's easy to get overwhelmed and look at the uh, frustrations of the world um, or even like, even just some of the precautions we have to live with on a daily basis. I mean, the truth is like this idea that like what comes from the outside defiles, like that is actually the way the physical body works. Like that's why we wear masks. That's why we're separated because germs really can. The things that come from outside can hurt you in your body. But spiritually, it works the other way. This is what Jesus is saying. And like I said, it's easy to get overwhelmed uh, by the things of the world. Uh, and for people from my generation, there was a song that was popular on the radio way back in like the 90s. 
um, called Where is the Love by Black Eyed Peas. And it's sort of easy to like ask that question when we look around the world, we're like, where is the love right now? But I think the words of Jesus and the example of this woman tell us pretty clearly that if you're wondering where God has put the love, you, if you can't see it, it's probably because God has put it in your heart. It's put it in your heart to share. He's given you the power to love. And, I, and that feels crazy that God would, would take his precious, healing, life-giving love and put it into each one of us like in our own heart, like why would you why would you trust me with that? That seems heretical. That seems like heresy. It's like all true things, all really true things. So this is like where I'm at today. Is a prayer that each of us in our own way can take responsibility for the love that's been put in our heart that we have to share that each of us in our own way can shed all of the negativity and destruct and self-destructive behaviors of the world around us and come back with the kind of creative and tenacious love that this woman has as she's in searching for to heal to heal her daughter because one thing's for sure our country and our world is sick and they are our children and they need our protection and they need all of the healing that we can muster we need the best, even in a world that's trying to draw sides. Because the crossing is within, and as it turns out, there is no other side. Amen. Amen.